Introducing the G-Shock Mudman, the GW9500. Welcome to my channel, gentlemen. My name is Jim Kincaid, and this is my review. I've only had it for about a week. I ordered it as soon as I was it was available on the Casio website. It came in this bag, which I did not order. It was $2.49. Somehow it got onto my order, but whatever. Uh, and I... <sighs> I can't give it five stars, guys. There's a couple problems that I'll get into later on with this watch. It's it's at least four stars, though, because this is terrific. And I need to commend Casio for making a G-Shock in the traditional G-Shock triumvirate of greatness, which is the Mud Resist, the Tough Solar, and the Multiband 6. Those are the three important features for me in the G-Shock. My last G-Shock, well, my pre I have a, as you can see, I have a bunch of them. My first G-Shock, actually, the King, the GWX56BB, has that triumvirate. And, well, yeah, you can see it's still a little bit dirty because this was my previous work watch. And I toyed around with some other watches like the other big release of this year which is the GBDH 2000 which is extremely comfortable absolutely amazing but I have a little bit of apprehension about the buttons and the optical sensors given my vocation I am a hand in the West Texas oil field I operate uh, oil field equipment and I drive trucks excuse me I drive Peterbilt's sometimes Western Stars but that's a different story and watches like this you know, even though they're, they're G-Shock, there's still a little bit of apprehension. Zero apprehension about this one. I've worn it uh, at work for the past two days, and I've taken it hiking uh, at Cap Rock Canyon in Guadalupe, Texas. Excuse me, Quidiqui, Texas. And you can watch that video. I kind of, it's just a cursory uh, comparison between the Mudman GW9500 and the GBD H2000, okay? But this is my review video. Definitely four stars. Uh, I'm going to finalize exactly how many stars, but it, it definitely has four. It's, it's not all the way up to the fifth star. There's a big problem. I'll get into that. But let's start off with the positives. First of all, we finally have big numbers on a G-Shock. This has got to be the first big numbered G-Shock, okay? Because usually... Excuse me for the LCDs, because obviously these MIP displays have big numbers. But this is like a typical G-Shock watch where you have tiny numbers. All right? And to make matters worse, this King, the GBD, or the GWX56BB, it has a reverse LCD. So uh, the numbers let through the light, and the rest of the LCD screen is opaque. Very difficult to read. I made a lot of rant videos about how difficult these negative LCD screens are to read. What's the point of getting a watch? You can't read it. How did this leave the Casio headquarters? Who approved you know, all these negative LCDs? It's absolutely infuriating. Now the Mudman has a positive LCD, which is great in big numbers, okay? And uh, that's commendable. I really like that. And there's some versions of this watch with a negative LCD. And even though the watch face is bigger, I would avoid the negative LCDs. And that's the issue that I'm going to get into, which is there's still some legibility issues, okay? And it has to do with this compass, which looks cool. It's an LCD that's overlaid over the regular LCD, but it causes some problems, okay? But we're staying positive, okay. All these buttons are certified mud resist. Now, I don't know if you guys notice this, but the Range Man is not being advertised by Casio as being mud resist. This is a mud resist, the King, and these buttons don't move at all. So these buttons are like the case of your OtterBox or LifeProof phone case. They, they don't actually move. You just kind of squish them in. It's not a fully articulating button. So, I, I had, when I was wearing this to, at work, I, I would not hold back at all on this watch. And with the new Mudman, I'm not going to hold back either. But these buttons actually move. And there's a lot of play in them, which it's supposed to have. 
okay? So this button moves to press another button that uh, activates the button sensor in the module. So there's a layer of protection, okay? And on the right hand side buttons, they have a steel cylinder that encapsulates the button movement for protection. The same thing as the light button. On the left hand side, flanking either side of the ABC sensor, the buttons themselves are metal, okay? So, this gives it a really great rugged appearance, but it's not just about appearance. This keeps the buttons from, from becoming damaged, which can happen in, you know, a rigorous activity, whether it be recreational or vocational, okay? You know, I got to swing a hammer sometimes for work, you know, like a big four or six pound hammer. And, uh, and, and so when you're looking for a work watch, if you are in a trade, or your blue collar or your Vokey, whatever you want to call yourself, you want a rugged watch. And so far this has definitely fit the bill, which, you know, that 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 gives it a bunch of stars. This watch is very rugged, okay? Now, the problem with work watches when you're when you're uh, in a blue collar world, it's it's not the watch itself that's ever broken on me, okay? So this is a regular Casio that I've worn to work uh, for over a year and you can see that it's all marked up it's been damaged so much and I don't care about the scratches but it's it's still going you know the rigors of work haven't destroyed the actual watch the problem is with the pins and the band okay see the bands ripping already that's what prompted me to get another watch and I have been going through so many El Cheapo Casio watches with a mentality of well if it breaks I'll just get a new one whatever well, after like three Casio calculator watches, and then this one's starting to break, I was like, you know what? Let me get, uh, let me look into G-Shock watches, which all these retired army guys are talking about at work. And that's what led me to the King, because a lot of the G-Shock watches just don't, do not fit a big wrister. The King does. The strap's really big, okay? And so, when it comes to the Mudman, the GW9500, I am real happy to report that this does fit my eight and a half inch wrist. However, I'm, I wear it on the last notch. Okay, so uh, eight and a half inches is probably the the maximum. If you wear it really tight, maybe you could get eight and three quarters. But I'm getting off on a sidetrack, a big wrist or sidetrack. My point was the durability of the pins, guys. The pins. Are screwed in okay these aren't these aren't uh, pins that will ever pop out I think that this part of the watch is or the band is the weak spot this part will break before any other part okay the pins are not going to pop out on the uh, GW 9500 and the band is very thick look how thick that band is okay Unlikely to tear, okay. And I'm and and if you want a totally indestructible band, Bertucci makes this tri dura band in these pins that go all the way through. This like having a band that says it's indestructible that that eh, causes a little bit of apprehension because what if this gets caught in rotating machinery and they want to break free? You know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe this is really paranoid of me, but I, but. This is, this band is rugged enough, I don't think it would break at work, and if I had to like, rip my hand free, if it got caught, I, I think I could do that, I think that I'm strong enough. But I'm, I'm, I'm way, um, all these tangents, right? I think that a lot of people like the tangents of my review videos, but sometimes I have to rein it in. Anyways, the points I wanted to cover were that this watch is very rugged, the band is very rugged. The pins are not going to pop. You know my quote when it comes to work watches. If they're pins, they'll pop. No pins on the Mudman. And the module itself is a module that I like very much. Now, just to keep you guys up to speed, the module is like, you know, the insides of the watch, what it does, okay? So, G-Shock makes, or Casio makes G-Shock, and Casio makes another line of watches 
called ProTrek, okay? The ProTrek watches are for uh, <coughs> hiking, all right? Let me find my ProTrek, where'd it go? So, it was just right here. I got so many watches, I gotta like go through them all and find the ProTrek. <coughs> so they have anal the analog ProTreks. <coughs> Excuse me. Where'd my ProTrek? Oh, here it is, it's hiding directly under the camera. They have a, uh, hold on, I need to chug more C4, excuse me. So they have uh, analog ProTrex, and they take, they just pretty much take that ProTrex module out of the watch <coughs> and ensconce it in a tough G-Shock body. And that's what the Mudmaster is, okay? So here's a Casio ProTrek, excuse me, <coughs> digital watch. And this son of a gun, everybody's been wondering, you know, when are they going to make the, the G-Shock version of, of a digital ProTrek? Well, that's what the Mudman is, okay? So the Mudmaster is, is your G-Shock analog version of, of the Pro Trek in the Mud Man is the digital okay you guys did you guys write that down that's a lot of valuable information okay so this particular watch is the PRW 3500 and you can see my review of it uh, you can buy it used I got this one for like hundred and twelve dollars and I'm selling this particular one if you're interested I got it used on eBay uh, and this this one is pretty rugged itself, but the band is is too short. Like I can put like wearing it on the last rung, it's just way too tight for my eight and a half inch wrist. But if your wrist is shorter or smaller than eight and a half inches, you should have no problem. So they took this digital module out of the Pro Track and put it in the Mud Band. And so the advantages to this type of watch, this Pro Track is that this is intended to be for hiking, okay? And so you can access the ABC sensors with with one button press, rather than scrolling through a menu like you'd have to on the GBDH2000. So what is what are the ABC sensors? For those of you who don't know, you have an altimeter, which is this bottom right button, a barometer, and a compass. And there's a fourth sensor. If you look on the barometer, at the bottom is a thermometer. So it can tell you the temperature. And so this is important information if you're hiking or camping, and also if you work outside. Okay, so I'm out here in West Texas, and I see all these storms pop up, you know, horrible thunderstorms. The, the app on the phone doesn't even know sometimes, and other times there's no cell service, so the app on the phone lake will be saying it's sunny, and you see, you're see you seeing a storm form. Well, the barometer, if you look at the barometer, there's a graph here. The sudden drops sometimes indicate that a storm is, is about to form. There's all these rules pertaining to how the barometer may go up and down, they give you an indication about upcoming weather events. And obviously, you know, they're not like set in stone. It's just, it's just probab probabilistically possible. And, uh, and the altimeter is good, you know, when you're hiking. Uh, it, you know, for those of you who saw the hiking video I made with my boys, Cap Rock Canyon, it's kind of fun to see how high or how, how low you're hiking, you know, how far down in a canyon or how, how high up on a mountain you're going. And you can get a numerical uh, value for, for your ascent or descent. And the compass will help you find your bearing. And uh, you have to calibrate it, okay? So those, those are very useful functions. And there's one more useful function, which I really like, is what's called in other watches an almanac. The GBDH2000 calls this an almanac. 
but it's a sunrise and sunset. And on the mud mud man, it's it's the it's the next mode over from your time. So say here we are in the time. It's uh, three ten p.m. So you just press the mode button, bottom left button once, and it says sun. That's not doesn't mean Sunday. It means this is the sunrise seven o seven a.m. and this is the sunset eight thirty eight p.m. Okay. So you have to set your longitude and latitude for this to be correct but if you just enter your time zone it will give you the sunrise and sunset for the main city in that time zone and the main city in my time zone is Chicago so obviously that's gonna be wrong and I, you know I use the GBH 2000 to get the GPS coordinates okay but again we'll have we'll have a uh, you know a de an in-depth comparison between the mud man and the GBH 2000 so continuing on with a review of the Mudman, uh, this has all of the basic watch functions that you want in your Casio G-Shock, which is the time, uh, the stopwatch, the timer, and alarms. It, it will give you, uh, you can set another time zone, so I'm looking at the mountain time zone here in case unfortunately I'm sent to New Mexico. And you can, uh, and as a multi-band six, okay, so every night this watch will receive radio waves from, uh, I think it's WVVW or WWVV, it's a radio station in Denver, that it's the atomic clock, it just broadcasts the time, and you can synchronize your watch. So you never have to worry about your time being incorrect, like you can with very basic watches, like the problem with this watch, in terms of its accuracy is that yeah you got a nice cheap watch but when you're scrolling through the mode see how that seconds is blinking this is actually uh, setting the time so if you accidentally are bumping your this button and it goes to set the time you know it could accidentally start setting the time you know it would be incorrect say you're bumping all these buttons you don't even notice and your times incorrect and you're, you're late to work wherever it's embarrassing right these buttons are designed to to not be accidentally pressed because they're guarded by these chunks of plastic so these aren't a lot of this plastic is really form over function it just looks like arbitrary bumps but it's not these bumps here are protecting these buttons from being pressed accidentally okay so there's a huge advantage to to this to this watch it costs it retails at three hundred eighty dollars so there are there there that that money in my opinion is well spent on a work watch you know I like I said earlier I used to be of the mentality you know just keep on buying El Cheapo watches no big deal well that's all right if you make it if you make it back home every day so say during the course of the day your watch breaks and you get home you know, on the way home, you just swing by Walmart and go into the discount bin and buy another cheap watch, right? What happens if you're out in the field and you're stuck at a well site for days on end and your watch breaks? You can't, you can't just leave and go to town uh, for, for, for the reason of just to get a new watch. So this is a dependable watch for someone in the oil field, in, uh, you know, forestry or, you know, uh, the military places or situations where you're you're not going to be swinging by a store just in case your watch breaks all right anyways another tangent let's let's get back to the main thread of my thought which as you guys can tell my thoughts are very complex my iq is probably like you know double digits but my thoughts my thoughts iq are very high and very complex and sometimes you know i get lost in my own thoughts what was I talking about before the tirade about 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 the El Cheapo watches and setting the time accidentally? Oh yeah, the basic functions. Guys, this has basic functions. This is the great this is what I love about this watch. I wish I could give it five stars, but what I love about this watch is there's no Bluetooth. Okay? This watch, the GBH 2000 has Bluetooth. It doesn't have multi-band 6. The Casio thinks that everybody wants to connect their watches to their phones. I do not. I want a watch that I can 
get out of the box, slap on my wrist, and and use it. Okay. And I, I don't want I want to leave my phone behind if possible. Okay. This watch is even worse. This is the Square Heart, my nickname for the DWH5600. This thing is nearly impossible to use without the Casio app on your phone to connect to the watch. And that really bothers me. That I mean but this is a, this is a subject for for an upcoming rant video for sure. I mean, there's a whole series of rant videos about the subject. But I, I I can tell you guys, I'm really happy and I commend Casio for getting back to basics, making a very rugged, durable G-Shock mud resist watch with what I call the triumvirate of great features, the trident of uh, mud resist, tough solar, and multi-band six. There it is, one, two, three. And as a bonus, you get these triple sensors, right? So this is very similar to the Rangeman, but the numbers are bigger. And uh, let me just say one, one more good thing about this watch that I like, I really like, before I get into some of the negatives, okay? What I like about this watch is, you see how you have these crenellations, they're like turrets uh, around the perimeter of the watch face, okay? The whole premise of, of the bezel of a G-Shock is to protect, protect the, the, uh, the surface of the mineral gla glass screen, okay? Mineral glass is not the most durable substance. There's some people who insist that watches should be sapphire. Either way, this, this uh, bezel has like a, like a, you know, a bezel around it that is raised above the glass to protect it from scratching. And there's a problem with that. There's a huge design problem that I didn't realize until I got the, the King. Like I always used to wonder why G-Shocks have these weird bumps. I thought they were just arbitrary decorations. But I was wearing this to work and I got like all this filthy grease and grime from working on uh, an engine of, of a, you know, a deck engine and it was pooling up and I had to wipe it away and it was very difficult to wipe away because it would get stuck and then uh, so I was like alright this is really dirty I'm gonna wear it in the shower and clean it so I brought it in the shower and the water was pooling up on here but but not uh, not draining and I was like oh man they should put like little drains in the corner so that all the water and all the filth could drain off and then a gong went off in my head and I realized that's what these bumps are. These bumps are crenellations to allow all of the, of the water to run off the screen and still have a raised protection to the screen, okay? So, uh, on the GBD-H2000, <clears throat> you still have a little bit of a raised edge and I still have some uh, filth pull up. Look at the mud man. There's nary a raised edge. It is very subtle. It's 1 32nd, 1 64th of an inch. Proud of the screen. But you still have these crenellations to protect the screen from getting scraped. That's a great design feature, okay? Because you have the best of both worlds. You have protection for the screen and you have drainage for screen clarity. And unfortunately, I'm going to get into a big negative about this watch now that I mentioned screen clarity. And it has to do with the sandwich layers of LCD, okay? It makes it difficult to read at some angles, okay? So there's some obstacles to legibility on the Mudman. And the first one is that the uh, it's very reflective. You know, I had a commenter in one of my videos today say it should be sapphire be less reflective but even if it was sapphire you have multiple layers of LCD to produce this overlay effect that is on the compass and the barometer so on the barometer there's one ray that will raise or lower to indicate whether the bar barometric pressure is rising or falling and on the compass, the three rays will point north, and you have one ray each 
for east, south, and west. Okay, that's a really cool feature. I do like it. Previous Pro Treks, like this one, just had, uh, instead of rays, they have these little dots along the perimeter to produce the same effect. But you can see how clear, how clear this LCD is compared to this one. It's dim. And there's another problem, and it, that is like dead areas or blind spots. There are certain angles that you can hold the mud man that the screen will appear totally blank or so faint it, you can't read it. And this isn't from reflection. This is from what's happening internally. Now, in high school physics, we learned about total internal reflection because of, of rays of light going through different media refract at, at, the, at the surface. And sometimes you get total internal reflection if the, uh, you know, the angle of refraction is, is so shallow, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to reflect right back to the source of the light. So the bottom of this LCD sandwich is a mirror that's supposed to reflect light back through the first LCD, which tells the time, then the second LCD, which is the compass overlay, and then the last piece of plastic, which is the protection for the, mod for the module, okay? So that each LCD, or two pieces of plastic sandwiched, all right, that's five pieces of plastic that the light has to go through after it bounces off the mirror at the bottom of the LCD. Are you guys following that? And now there's another factor besides total internal reflection, which is uh, the polarization. The light, each time it goes through each LCD, it's polarized. And I think that's what's causing those dead spots. And the dead spots don't appear during the day. During the day, you're going you're gonna to have like it's going to look dull at some angles. And right now it's pretty well lit because I, you know, I have the window to my right and it's letting in sunlight. You can still see the reflections. But at night, when you, when you turn on the light, if you hold it at just the right angle with the light on, it, the screen will look like it's totally blank. Okay? And I made a video about this. I'll link it below so you can kind of see it for yourself firsthand. That's a problem. You know, I... I I'm not like the Casio engineers, okay? My priority is legibility on, on my watches. A lot of Casio engineers seem to think that, you know, we want, uh, you know, like red watches with red dials, with red indices and red hands, or worse still, like gray watches with gray hands or black watches with black LCDs. I mean, what's the point? If you don't, if you don't have a watch you can read, you might as well just wear a big old chunky bracelet, right? So, I, I don't want to take a whole star off my review for the fact the screen is hard to see because the numbers are so big. And I, I have to give Casio credit for that. It's great that we have big numbers on the screen. But there is one other problem, and it has to do with the fit. This Mudman carries over a uh, design feature of the Mudmaster, which is the wings, okay? Do you see the wings, these pieces of plastic? On a big watch, like the uh, GWX 56BB, there's no wings, really. So you can see in the corners, there's gaps that if you were a small wrister, there would be a gap. It might cause the watch to shift. I am a big wrister, and as a big wrister, I don't want wings. And so these wings kind of make the watch really tight because, I mean, they're meant to take up uh, area under the watch. And unfortunately, they do that pretty well. And there's barely any movement in the wings, okay? But still, it, it, there's enough movement that it, that it grabs hair sometimes. Not nearly as bad as this uh, ProTrek. You can see that these wings, these wings look like little insects that are feeding on on your hair see how much they move nom 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 feed me arm hair ha 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 right i probably shouldn't trash this watch because like i said earlier i'm trying to sell it 
I think it would be cool to put like a like you know like a strap like this on on the PRW 3500, which I may do an upcoming video if I don't sell it. But anyways, where'd my mud man go? Oh, here's a GBDH 2000. After wearing this watch for so long, it's hard to wear another watch. This is the GBDH 2000 because Casio has integrated the wings into the band. So there's no biting of the arm here. And it splays out all the way. Okay? The mud man doesn't splay out at all. Okay? And sorry that this uh, camera's not focusing well. It's because so, this is a Sony camera, and so many people, you know, are telling Sony and Canon, oh, make, make a camera that gives us a blurred out background. And so that's what they're trying to do, and as a result, you have these cameras that are very difficult to focus because they have such narrow depth of field. Anyways, that's an upcoming rant video. I don't want to rant about that here. These, these wings don't move at all, barely anything just enough to sometimes scratch your hair which means that it articulates further down the band that's why earlier in this video I said that if it's gonna rip it's gonna rip right here so those those are the two problems the screen the screens can get dim and there's some blind spots in the screen some dead zones and some angles at night that you can't read it and the other one is that these wings are not at all comfortable especially compared to the GBDH 2000 and uh, you know this is a mud master you're supposed to wear it in extreme environments where you're subject to mud and filth and I think that that mud and filth could hide behind these wings if it really wanted to and it would be difficult to clean out you wouldn't be able to see it okay and and uh, so I'd hate to give this four stars I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it four stars and one, one like prong or one arm of one star plus the middle of the star, which, what is that? I guess that's, you know, 4.33 repeating stars, okay? It would be uh, such a great watch if they hadn't have had that problem with the overlay. And, you know, when it's sunny out, it's not a big deal, but at dusk and dawn and at night, it is especially at night when you go to illuminate it and if this was a negative LCD yeah, you know I would definitely take a full star off uh, you know I was watching some some other gentlemen you know unbox and review their mud men that had the negative LCDs and even under studio lights they were having trouble reading the screen so but I, I really love this watch the more I wear it the more I like it and you know I'll, I'll compare it to the GBDH 2000 upcoming video and uh, I'll also try and get the light just right in an upcoming video to compare the crispness of this Pro Trek to how dull the mud man can get alright but I do recommend this watch I think that this is a good example of what a G-Shock watch can be although it's pretty expensive and some of these smart watches, I think that Casio's kind of lost its bearing. They should have, you know, got their compass out and realized that they need to point north. And north is with multiband six, tough solar, and mud resistance. Okay. Oh, and one more point. This is it, but just one more point. Uh, the, the tough solar indicates that this watch can be functioned entirely from solar charging unlike their their new semi smart watches which have to be plugged in okay but anyways that's my review of the Mudman GW9500 4.333 three stars I do recommend it and my name is Jim Kincaid Thanks for watching.